No, you've been a good friend And that's in the thick and thin And I know it's never gonna end Cause you've been a good friend Hi, welcome back to my channel According to Cat. If you're new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. Also, if you'd like to get more videos just like this one where I am DIYing products from the Dollar Tree, from th thrift stores, anything like that on a budget or any type of trash to treasure, please consider subscribing. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So what are we going to be making today? In my last video, we made a DIY wooden sign for a boy's room. It was an adventure sign, and I promised you girls that I wouldn't forget about you. And here we go. This is going to be your sign, Mermaid Cove. And it has hooks, mermaids, and seashells. If you want to learn how to make it, stay tuned. If you would like a list of supplies, check out the description box. And without further ado, let's get on with the video okay so let's see what we're going to need first thing i need is a piece of wood i got this from the habitat for humanity restore i got it for a dollar fifty just big enough to hold your mermaid and some lettering this mermaid i got from the dollar tree it is a plaque but i'm going to remove her i have my gloves to get ready to stain this is a grayish carbon charcoal color I got this stain from Joann's. It is going to give me that weathered wood look, kind of like that beachy look. So the first thing I'm going to do is just brush it on with my brush and let it kind of soak in a little bit. Now watch what happens when I start wiping it off. Now it really starts, it actually takes off a little too much color, but you're going to see how I fix this. It still has that grayish look in places, but it's just not how I really wanted it to look. So I'm taking my antique wax from Waverly that you get at Walmart, and I'm starting to brush it on. Now I'm adding a layer of more like a brown. I'm still getting that weathered wood look that I wanted, but it's adding a different element, almost another layer. I even add one more color to that. You'll see in a few minutes. Okay, so now I'm taking off my mermaid. She is stuck on. So this is my scraper I have from the Dollar Tree. And I kind of like bent her tail. So that's okay. I'm going to reinforce the whole bottom half of her anyway with some, you'll see, some beautiful paper. I don't even call it paper. I guess you, you'll see. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure I, you know, hot glue that part of the tail that fell off and anything that was bent. Again, I am going to cover her tail with something. And I just need that to have a shape, basically. So this is fabric paper. It was about a dollar forty. Was that say 67? I'm not even quite sure, but I got it half off. I got it from Hobby Lobby. These papers are beautiful. They have different colors. I love them. It's fabric paper and they're thick and they're substantial and they're beautiful. So you can cut them with a regular scissor. They're fine. So basically I traced her bottom half and now I hot glued it on and I'm putting her in the middle to see where I, I want her. I want her to be between the word mermaid and the word cove. I'm setting out what um, seashells I would want so I know how to space my lettering. So the first thing I do is I created a purp light purple color which my daughter wanted and I used acrylic blue, I mean blue, acrylic purple with some Waverly white chalk paint and I'm using my stencil and I'm just painting it right on. As I do this, I notice I don't like the way it looks. I take a paper towel. That's not doing the trick. Let me get my baby wipe because baby wipes are awesome. And look how it comes right off. So you make a mistake. It is very forgiving for the fir first few minutes. Now I am tracing each letter with a pencil. And I will go back and hand paint each letter. I had to use the M twice for mermaid so I'm moving it over 
Okay, so this is the paintbrush I'm going to use. It's pretty solid. It's it's like a, it's not flimsy. Let's put it that way. It's a very nice paintbrush. So I'm painting my letters. I'm starting with the M. And like if I get a little bit out of line, I can use my nail and it just scrapes away. It's perfect. I really love the way that wood looks. Okay, so I go through all the letters. I want this to look like a sign you would see by a beach and it's very weathered and old looking and that's the look I was going for. More of that driftwood look. So I finished the word cove and now I'm going to go move on to the sanding. I try all different sandpapers from the Dollar Tree. First the the light grit one then I tried the block one and now I'm doing the medium grit one and trying to get the look I'm looking for this is the mineral chalk paint Waverly and I'm going to add another layer to this uh the wood I love this layer this is my favorite this is what I really think brings out that driftwood beachy look um and if I get a little too heavy, all I did was sand it away. So now I have the gray, the brownish um, antique look, and now this mineral, kind of like a sandy look. It looks awesome. I love it. So basically, I just placed the seashells from the Dollar Tree where I wanted them. All these products so far are from the Dollar Tree, except for the wood that I got from Habitat for Humanity. Okay, now it's time for the fishing net. Now, this is not really fishing net from the Dollar Tree. It is from the Dollar Tree. However, it is sold at Halloween time. It is more of that spooky netting, but I like to use it as the fishing netting because the fishing net has very is very spaced apart um, and the strings are spaced apart, and I, I don't love that. So I'm using this as if it's the fishing net. All right, so I'm cutting it to size and I'm pulling up um, I'm kind of like putting the glue down and then a, I roll the netting and stick it into the glue. I find it, I find it's easier when I roll the netting so that all of that, <laughs> it's just sticking to my fingers all over the place. All right. So I roll it, um, into the glue and then I cut up, cut off any excess. Okay. So I did each corner. And now I'm going to put some in the middle, kind of where the mermaid is. And I'm just draping it where I'd want it. And I hope I get to show you the technique now. So I put the glue down and then I roll the netting right into that glue. kind of an up close look so I put some on the left side and on in the middle and on the right side so I feel like I need some more of this mineral paint to get put right on my mermaid I need to weather her a little bit she's too shiny so I take some of that mineral mineral paint and the chalk paint and I kind of go through I do some of her tail and I do her upper body I still think I need a little more weathering, so I take my antique wax and I am going to do the same thing. I'm just brushing the edges, right along the edges. You'll see it now when I put it on the actual mermaid's upper half. I'm putting it all along her tail edges. You can kind of see. Sorry, I don't have it in frame as much as I should. I apologize. Okay, see there, I'm just kind of quickly brushing it through and it just adds one more layer to her. And I go back over the wooden sign and add a little extra of that Waverly antique wax. So this is from the Dollar Tree. It is their six hook over the door holder. And I'm taking off the part you would put over the door. Um, wire cutters did it. But basically, all you're going to do is just bend it back and forth. You don't even need that. I noticed it was a little sharp. I didn't want it cutting my walls or my children or anything else. So I put um, a dollop of hot glue on there. And that seemed to do the trick. Um, 
and I decided the best way to keep this on here and be able to hang dresses or her school uniform or whatever, I needed to make sure it's stable. So I got my arrow um, staple gun and it holds the, the really long staples, which is nice for this type of project. Now the first one, you can see it still moves, but once I do the cross beam, it really stays in place. I pick it up by that and I like really shake it around and I'm telling you that ain't moving. So I can hang some heavy um, items on there and it's not going to fall off. So I secure a few more of those cross beams and I think it's ready to go. I take some wire. I wish I had my thicker wire, but I couldn't find it at this point and I actually went and bought more so that I had it. I tie, um, I, I string it around my finger so it makes like a little loop and then I staple gun that down. I will pull it as taut as I can. I put it around my finger again and I staple gun that and now I go back and I put a little hot glue on there just as an added support and you can see it's pretty tight. And here it is! Here's my finished project! I absolutely love it. I think it's so cute and you know what's even better? My daughter loves it. She was so excited when she saw it. Her eyes lit up and she said, I cannot wait to put this in my room. I'm going to hang my purses on it. I'm going to hang my dresses on it. She's so excited. So here's what it looks like. I love how weathered it looks. I love that it looks like you'd find it at the beach. And I hope you like it as much as I do. So I just want to take a moment to thank you all who have been using such kind words and encouraging statements in the comments below. It has meant so much to me and I just want to thank all of you who have been helping my channel grow so fast. I have over 2,000 subscribers in two months and that's amazing to me. I never would have thought this would have grown this fast and I just want to thank so many of you that you're on this journey with me because it's so exciting and I love it. I, I love doing it. I love sharing tips with you. I love hearing what you guys are making and it's just amazing. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate everyone out there that has been part of this journey. So thank you. Remember, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. I can't wait to keep going with this and let's see where it goes. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.